Following a series of severe famines between 1740 and 1770, a century of sectarian division and serious agrarian tension, the Lord Lieutenant Townsend described Ireland's peasantry as amongst the most wretched people on earth. The American War of Independence and French Revolution both showed what could be achieved by united peasant resistance and revolt. In 1791, in response to Britain's divide and rule tactics, the United Irishmen were formed in Belfast as a multi-denominational pressure group for parliamentary reform. They were led by a young Protestant lawyer from Dublin named Wolf Tone, who recognised at an early stage that the revolution in France had changed in an instant the politics of Ireland and concluded that England's difficulty was Ireland's opportunity. When England and France resumed war in 1793, the United Organisation was declared illegal in an attempt to thwart any Irish collusion with the French. However, by 75, the United Irishmen had regrouped as a secret society with a less political and increasingly revolutionary ideology, as Tone set about rallying the promised French aid. Following a failed French landing at Bantry Bay in December 96 and subsequent reports of a fresh invasion force being assembled by Napoleon, almost all the United leaders were arrested following betrayal early in 1798. The fragmented revolt which occurred over the following months was not so much a nationwide rebellion for national liberation as a small series of local, generally unconnected risings. The brutal reprisals by Crown forces for support or sympathy with the United Movement following various failed actions in Leinster were particularly savage in the counties of Kildare and Wicklow. At Dunlavin on May 24th, following a false confession by a villager demented by horrendous torture, a group of over 30 innocent paraders led by the local pipe band were arrested on the day of the local fair, marched to the fairgrounds and executed without further investigation. The people of South Leinster, already terrified by daily floggings and house burnings of all suspected United sympathisers, now rose up at Boule Vogue and Oulart and County Wexford under the leadership of a local priest, Father Murphy, at the end of May. The Wexford Rising disregarded all United notions of non-sectarianism and was instead a savage contest between Crown forces with Protestant loyalist support and Catholic peasants. On June 21st, armed with little more than pikes, the rebels were defeated by General Lake's artillery and cavalry at Vinegar Hill. Meanwhile, in the northern county Antrim, the planned United Rising was undermined by lack of strong leadership, as was the resistance in neighbouring County Down. The leaders of these failed efforts, Henry John McCracken and Henry Monroe, were both executed, as were large numbers of their followers. Finally, the French landed two months too late with a small army in County Mayo. After some initial success due more than anything else to surprise, they were heavily defeated at Balnamuk, where despite surrendering under a flag of truce, hundreds of prisoners were slaughtered. So, through poor organisation and coordination of rebel forces, ill-timed and inadequate French aid and immensely superior crown strength, the 1798 rebellion failed. Nevertheless, it was a vital turning point in Irish history as the concept of an independent republic now became the dominant aspiration of future Irish nationalism.